We saw that series earlier. It was very close calls on to Minpoike. Game five, I think, went down to about 1% health on both members. Let's see how Clyde can do. What's he really going to be watching for in this matchup? I think this is one of the best parts about the Arena World Championship Series is when new teams and new rosters, new groups of friends decide to come together and build up and take their shot at the best teams. We see Change My Mind with a close call against Jabingos in the upper bracket and then getting eliminated by the newcomers, well, sort of not so newcomers, uh, DHDK Nation. Now, Jabingos have an opportunity to make a name for themselves here in the lower bracket. Both these teams face elimination. Crowd control already in favor of Jabingos as Clyde is feared into a full polymorph. Jabingos going for a big push here on a Ratcher, looking for a cloak of shadows. Ratcher ducks to the pillar, line of sighting both Sheep Machine and Yeezy, but Clyde needs to jump back to him as soon as possible. They reconvene at the pillar. Now, while all three members are stacked together, you see Yeezy going for Shadow Furies and Cataclysm, Blizzard from Sheep Machine, all these area of effect spells. So if you try and run away from the Mage Warlock Druid at the pillar and you stand next to each other, you're going to get cleaved down. If you try and push out and spread apart, then you're going to be crowd controlled and bursted. And that's the strength of this composition. So far, Jabingo's playing it out solidly. This is kind of interesting from Chalky Milkman. When previewing this matchup, you know, Jabingos, they have a very similar composition or the exact same composition as Cloud9 over in North America. And Chalky Milkman, they have very similar compositions to a team like Never Lucky. I really expected Chalky Milkman to be bringing in the Fire Mage Assassination Rogue Holy Paladin in this matchup, as it just seemed like such a one sided matchup when we saw Never Lucky play against Cloud9, potentially the best Mage Lock Druid in the world. There's really didn't feel like there was much they could do. So, Chucky Milkman locking in the Frost Mage Assassination Druid is kind of interesting to me. I'm kind of curious why they decided to go for that. I mean, we, we said that, you know, Jamingos, they lost to change my mind, but that was a 3-2 series. It was a close call. It could have gone either way. So, uh, this is just... I'm a little bit puzzled as what Chalky Milk Band is doing. Yeah, they have the Rogue Mage Paladin. We've seen it before. They're definitely confident in it. Perhaps they feel that the Rogue Mage Druid is just as competent uh, in the matchup, but I would say after watching Never Lucky be able to dismantle Cloud9 that, I mean, it has to be easier to execute, especially with that defensive avoid the team strategy until deep dampening. Although in this position, they do have a pretty big pressure point onto the Warlock. Huxel is desperately trying to stabilize him with Iron Bark. Easy using that demonic gateway, escaping back to the pillar so that he can line of sight Gelubaba. But Gelubaba looks to blink in and continue the assault. Ratcher actually overextended, taking some pretty big hits. Good positioning on Yeezy's part. Nice counter engagement, banking them a cloak of shadows, but they're behind on cooldowns at the moment. And perhaps this is just it. Huxel trinkets into a silence. All right. Well, Beautifully crowd controlled. So I suppose if you play Rogue Mage to. The high leaves. Maybe the Paladin is also a good option, and this is a good time to try and find out. Yep, Hooksell swaps over to the Paladin here. Game two between Jabingos and Chucky Milkman. Chucky Milkman looking to see how much they can just push forward. They could take this series easily. That would be another big stride for this team that wants to push for that top four. Yeah, there is a big difference between the Holy Paladin and the Restoration Druid, like Supertease was kind of mentioning. The Restoration Druid it is susceptible to that Kleptomania spell steal coming in from Gelu that's going to be removing all those heal over time effects. The one downside to the Holy Paladin is you can't defend yourself against Polymorphs nearly as easily. So Gelu in this matchup should have a much easier time actually landing Polymorphs onto Huxel. It wasn't a big issue for, uh, issue for him in the last game, but you can see. The Paladin doesn't really have that same luxury to go into bear form, just completely immune uh, that crowd control. And now you can see Huxel caught into a bash, forced to use a blessing of protection, but that leaves Easy in a little bit of trouble, already having to use on any result. I mean, this is multiple cooldowns, and the crowd control is still coming. If they can stop Huxel from getting a heal with the Avenging Wrath, Easy dies so easily. He goes for the Divine Favor. No interrupt or removal of that. But it actually got cycloned. Beautiful cyclone on Clyde's part. Yeezy is just being denied on the heels of the Avenging Wrath perfectly by Chalky Milkman. This is a total shutout by the Chalky Milkman. This is an easy win. He gets Frost Nova out of the smoke bomb, stunned on his freedom. I've never seen a team completely destroyed. We've been talking about dampening. These teams really want to send off 815 with a bang here. Looking to be our quickest series of the year. Chalky Milkman one game away from flat out eliminating Jabingos in style. Yeah, what are they going to be able to do in game number three? Mugabala, a very large map. You can see the position of the demonic gateway. Easy has right now. He placed it on the floor and then up 
uh, on top of where this little ledge is. You can see Clyde actually in a great position. There's a sap over on the Hawks, although they're looking to get aggressive very early on. It was a nice job by Rasher actually finding him in that moment. Clyde moving in. Is there going to be follow-up crowd control? Gelu caught into a polymorph, unable to really help out his team. And because of that, Chalky Milkman hasn't been able to get the most aggressive opener. He's definitely a Warlock-friendly map, as we do anticipate Yeezy to be using that gateway to go up the Z-axis and prevent the reconnect when he's in trouble. He used it during the earlier stages of the matches. Now he doesn't have that escape. So Chalky Milkman know that. They're committing their entire arsenal, popping both Icy Veins and Vendetta to ramp up a huge amount of damage onto the Warlock. They desperately want to get an unending resolve with this push, but it's looking like unlikely going to be happening. Huxel moving in, jumping across. What is, where is Huxel trying to go? Maybe just reposition away from Gelu. Gelu is playing a lot more on top of Huxel. He knows that Ratcher is the main focus target, typically when you're playing with two spellcasters. So in this case, the Warlock Yeezy and Sheep Machine the Mage. You're going to be attacking the melee DPS of the opposing team if there is one. So the melee DPS of Chalky Milkman, of course, being the rogue of Ratcher. Gelu then expects that strategy and is playing a lot more aggressive. He's trying to be the playmaker and set things up because he knows that Ratcher is going to be shut down and focus fired. So it will be on Gelu's shoulders to sort of build momentum for Ratcher's then damage to actually build momentum for the team. Clyde is repositioning towards Huxel. It could also be that they need to stop drinks. Huxel looks like he may even be drinking right now, even though he's at 80%, but he could be baiting Clyde to run into a stun. Clyde runs into a stun. Huxel isn't going to go for the risky Cyclone. Instead, repositioning to heal Yeezy as he is being pressured. Sheep Machine takes control of Gelu. Three polys into likely three fears, totally shutting down the attack. I will say Jabingo's defense is looking more solid here. Now actually sneaking a fear on Clyde. Perfectly done there by Yeezy, despite being the pressure target at the moment. Gets a fear that secures the most important cooldown from the Rogue, the Cloak of Shadows. Good counter engagement from Jabingos. Yeah, Clyde tried to go for a hero play, sort of leaping across, landing the bash over onto Huxel, looking for a polymorph, or a, a cyclone rather. Yeezy managed to get that fear, which did force Rasher into that Cloak of Shadow. So maybe a little bit of over-aggression there coming in from Chalky Milkman. At the very least, Jabingos was able to punish that and get out some defensives that now definitely leave Ratcher a little bit more vulnerable. Ratcher, he goes for the sap over on Huxel. Clyde in a good position to follow up the crack control. Yeezy could be in some trouble. Sheep Machine trying to defend a nice blink counter spell is going to be able to shut that down. Yeezy should be able to survive, but Yeezy still in a situation where he's caught into a cycle and there's really no help from his team. Gelo's caught into a bash, so there's not too much damage coming in for him, but Ratcher manages to find the Garotzons. Huxel caught into a full blind. Frozen Orb gets dropped down. Huxel has to trick it out into a bash. Good crowd control chain coming in once again from the Chalky Milkman. Full polymorph secured. What is Yeezy going to do? Gelo with a huge Comet Storm might be able to take him down. If they can extend this crowd control chain, I could easily see Javingo's falling. Unending resolve needs to be enough for Yeezy to survive. He may hold on barely. Smoke Bomb is preventing some heals from Huxel. Ratcher stuns up Yeezy. He can't escape. Huxel jumps in, but jumps into a stun. Beautiful Smoke Bomb usage from Ratcher throughout this entire series and ultimately is going to win them the game in a very quick succession. I don't think we see... Feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is going to get a little bit further into this tournament? Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered in the middle of history the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.